Check one, 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 two. Check, 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 check. Hey, that should be my code. I have. Oh, all right. All right. Well, then, uh, um, little headphones. Let me see. I have headphones. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. No, okay.
Así de de fui de alegría y yo yo darme esta dice A veces es una locura, a veces es un gran amor que se siente en el corazón. Las lágrimas queremos evitar para no dejar en un estado. Son las condiciones que en la última solo busco. Lo imposible, lo imposible, lo imposible, lo imposible.
veces se, se siente solo solo
así de la forma que te fuiste de mí Dicen que Trying to think what I should actually. Hi, ah, what's up? Check. Testing, testing. It's actually nervous now. <laughs> Okay, cool. So if anything, start without the music, and then we'll. Pop. Okay, cool. All right. So. You can uh, turn it off, and you can hide the uh, little dynamics response curve, and you can even hide this little uh, this little view right here, which actually shows you the waveform. And if I play it right now, you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. You can actually see the audio waveform coming in. You can actually see what you're doing. Um, and then you have this, it hides the gain reduction meter, it makes it smaller or bigger. Um, for the view controls. You also have, um, when you go into the actual parameters, you can, uh, you have an input gain, which basically is before the, uh, plug-in, so it's just basically what goes into the compressor. You have a preamp filter, which basically is a high and low pass filter, so it actually filters the signal out. Then you have the side chain, which is what it's listening to. Um, this sidechain normally is internal. You can turn it external by just clicking the button, and you can listen to it by clicking this little uh, button right here. This is, again, a high and low pass filter. This goes all the way to 15 kilohertz. Starts at off, and then the high cut goes all the way to 100 hertz. Um, you have oversampling, which I actually really prefer if you're going to be doing any kind of expansion because it kind of helps prevent or minimize any pops or clicks that's going to happen. And then it goes straight into the envelope detection, which is the peak envelope, a hold, a re and then a release. You also have a shape function, which kind of makes things a little bit more. And um, honestly, it's kind of like one of those really advanced features I feel you should really like get into when you're actually really comfortable with compression in general. Um, you have an RMS time, which basically changes the... Uh, the parameters as instead of it being a peak detection it's more of a uh, rms and you also have a vca in opto mode which basically is uh kind of like vca is faster and more aggressive opto is kind of more like how an opto compressor works where it's slower a little bit smoother um you can make the opto pump a little bit like more interestingly um you have a peak in rms which lets you uh, go between peak detection and release and rms it's uh, really, really interesting because you can go, all these features you can, are very variable. You can go in between. And then after this, you basically go straight into the upper and lower curve. 
And the upper and lower curve basically are the compression and the expansion or gate um, features. I have a threshold, a knee, and a ratio control. If you actually, if I reset all these parameters to zero, you can actually see how you can uh, set the ratio. And you can actually see what's going on in your dynamic response window. You can control the knee and the depth I find kind of helps limit or control how much you're going to actually do any type of expansion, compression, or gating. The lower curve is basically the opposite. You can do a hard gating. And again, you have a soft and hard depth control, which can limit how much you're actually going to be doing. But a really interesting thing that I find is that you can also do expansion, meaning if you have something that lacks dynamics, you can, or you want to bring something up that's a little bit too quiet, you can very easily do that. Um, after that, you know, you have your gain reduction meter. You have your little window that shows you the actual waveform and shows you what you're doing. You have a makeup gain, which is before the limiter. And you have a compensate button. I prefer to leave the compensation to me because I'm doing things by ears. Um, you have a dry wet knob, so you can kind of, which is before the limiter. So you can kind of control, you know, you can really squash something and then like just have it just barely in there to add some body while still having the dynamics. Um, you can switch between a hard and soft style limiting, and again, that's variable, and you can change the release characteristics. Um, usually, I just leave this to, and just leave the release to, to stock. And then you have a post gain, which is after the limiter. So, if you're really cranking it and you're hitting the limiter hard for some extra like, like crunch, you can easily just bring the volume down by 20 dB or up by 20 dB. And I believe all of these makeup gains can go pretty far. The makeup is minus 60 all the way to plus 60. The pre is plus, tw plus 20 all the way to minus 20. So it's really, really like you have a lot of function and control. Now, I want to show you guys the basic actual control of how you should be able to use this. So we have here a guitar part. If I solo this up, and let's even take out the We'll have, you can hear that there's going to be an actual big difference between the loud and soft parts. So I'm going to play a little bit of the soft parts, and then it's going to go into the louder parts. You'll hear how it kind of sounds like it gets way louder, and it gets a little bit drowned out. So here we go. So as you can hear from that, um, you get a really big gain boost, which makes the other part sound a little quieter. So if I go to the quieter parts, it almost makes it seem like it's going to get lost. And in the actual mix, it kind of does leave a little bit too much of a contrast for me. So if we turn this on and we leave the dynamics alone. Versus like over here. Back to quiet, it kind of makes it sound like a little bit. I'm going to want to kind of squeeze it a little bit just to kind of make it more tame, but I'm not really trying to do anything too crazy to make it sound too squashed. So, what I can easily do is use the expander function. So, the way that that would work is we'd set an attack and release, and we'd actually use the lower curve. And the first thing that I like to do is I want to kind of determine how much do I want to actually raise it. And we're going to do it really gently at first because we want to make this kind of invisible. And then let's just take a listen to what we're doing. I usually set this the mode to VCA and peak because it's quicker. And then I can tune it. So let's find the actual kind of like threshold. And you can actually see right here on the game reduction meter that you're gaining some volume right here. Bypass it. Put up. You can hear a very noticeable gain, but difference. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to back that off a little bit because I want to make that more subtle. 
and then I like the way that's going. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to show you guys how to use the compression and uh, variable attack and releases, right? So that's what I kind of like it. So I know when I'm going to have that set up. I'm going to set this back to one. Let's go to the louder parts and the actual attacks and CA opto modes. So we'll set a ratio. We're going to go for a hard ratio. And we're going to go for a really fast attack and a really fast release. And this is just for the sake of uh, showing you guys the de demonstration. So we're going to bring the threshold down. I want you to hear the differences between the detection and, and releases. you can really hear from that, I'm making this very obvious by making it even a little bit too fast and too slow. You can hear the big difference. You get a like a really slow kind of like RMS style, depending on what, what RMS uh, speed you set, and you can get a really fast pumping release. And what you could do with variable controls, you can actually go in between. So let's see what we go if we go about 52%. So it's kind of grabbing it a little bit slower, and it's releasing it a little bit slower. And I think I'm going to actually open the attack a little bit more. And then we can actually see what goes on if we switch between the VCA and Opto, too. So let's make VCA, and here's going to be Opto. So as you can hear from that, you're getting a very, very like opto style thing. You're getting a slower attack, and it feels like the release is holding it and kind of hugging it a little bit differently because of like the gain reduction. So what I like to do is I like to set like a really aggressive sound and be like, that's how I know I'm grabbing the peaks, and then I can actually gently like reduce, like raise my threshold so I'm not getting as much reduction, and then even mess with my opto setting. I like to go for opto if I want smooth. And like something more like, like really smooth and quiet or mellow music. Um, if I want something really aggressive and hard like rock vocals, I would go for VCA. Uh, this is obviously an acoustic song, so we're gonna go for a little bit more opto than VCA. Take a look. Let's take a listen. So, you know, it's catching it a little bit too much still, so I'm going to go peak a little bit more. But as you can see, we're getting a much more natural sounding compression. Really, really kind of like smoothed it out, and it's not sounding too pumpy, but we can do a little bit more tweaking to make it sound a little bit more natural. sounds pretty good. So let's take this out. So we'll play this and I'll turn it off in the middle of it playing it. So it's kind of tamed the peaks down and now we can actually bring it up in volume. And I would say that's about what 3 dB. So we'll just set this to about 3. If you hold shift you can actually go into these fine um, now, now what I want to do is I want to focus on showing the uh, expander now. So the expander is basically a gate or an expansion tool. Um, I like to use this primarily as an expansion tool. And like I said, my oversampling to times 4 because it reduces any type of weird artifacts. And all of this is going to be controlled by the parameters that I've set here. So let's listen to the quiet parts and let's set it to a section where we can kind of gain a little bit of volume but not make it too obvious.
making that sound a lot more uniform. So let's go into here and let's see if the transition still is hard. That sounds pretty okay to me. Now let me go back to the dynamics. I think I grabbed the wrong one. Oh, here it is. <laughs> I have so many dynamics set up. All right. So listen to this. Let's get more uniform. Cool. So I think that's good enough, and I think that's kind of added a nice bit of a uh, like gel because you're making the quieter parts louder while keeping the louder parts in check. You're not really making them quiet. You're just kind of keeping them in check, and this way it sounds more uniform and more natural. So if we actually listen to this in the mix, it shouldn't sound that bad anymore. Go back to the quieter part. Cool. So that's a pretty quick and pretty easy thing from scratch. As you can see, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of control, and it seems like this is pretty overwhelming at times. As you can really see, it's really easy once you understand the workflow. It just goes straight down from the input all the way down to the advanced oversampling. And then it goes back into the peak detection, the detection circuit, which has the RMS, the uh, VCA Opto peak RMS. You can see the dynamic response that you're setting up on the curves. And right here, you can see your actual waveform. You can see what you're doing. Green is expansion or gating. And uh, the purple are kind of like... Yeah, the purple would be, I guess that'd be kind of like reddish pink, but um, that would be your game. And this way you can actually have a lot of control. You can bring up something like a low bass while you're bringing down the upper notes and stuff like that. Again, you, if, if you want to squat or a wet knob, go for more of the sounds. So in this case, we're going to solo out the vocal. Let's even take out the reverb because a lot of reverb on this vocal. And... Let's just take a quick listen. These settings should be zeroed out. So just zero this out. Cool. And here we go. En el corazón, so this is going to be a really great way to show you guys the actual VC and optimal differences. If I leave the attack and release the same, you can hear a huge difference in this. So I'm going to set a relatively reasonable ratio but I'm going to kind of compress it really hard I'm going to show you let's turn off auto compensate you can see right here the speed and the release characters so let's go to the opt you can kind of hear it and you can see it right here in the little meters um in reduction attack and release characteristics change the opto is much smoother it's much more um i would say mellow a lot less uh heavy-handed and you get a nice aggressive sound into it by just doing the vca and opto. i think we want a little bit of aggression but we want mostly opto and that's just using the opto and VCA controls alone. Um, if you want to do another quick comparison between the peak and RMS, we can do a quick one too. 
So let's we're at peak right now. So let's lie. reduction meter. Low RMS time to lose. It's even slow. So, as you can see on vocals, it's really easy to tell what's going on here. We're getting a lot of control. And again, this is just a super simple, super quick, little, easy way to do things. You can easily create a gate this way too, because now that we have a vocal that we want to kind of like treat, we can easily, instead of expanding the quiet parts, which we might still want to do, we can even like gate out the uh, quiet hiss or the breaths that you don't want so much. So again, this is super, super easy. Um, the side chain, you can easily listen to what you're listening to. So let's just play that right now. Oh, I, I gated it. So when you click this, you're actually just listening to what the uh, high and low pass filter are doing to the uh, internal uh, detection circuit, not the actual. So you can actually determine what you want to do. If you want to kind of block out a kick or like a weird bump that happens every so often, you can easily do that. And if you want to do any actual cutting of the frequency signals, of the signals, frequency, you can do that with the actual preamp filter. And as you can hear, it's really good. You're kind of not really getting any of that whooshing sound. Which is actually really hard to get. I notice a lot of that when you go. Um, so you can do this for a very natural and very uh, easy way of, of uh, getting a natural sound in. So that's pretty much it for the dynamics. Next, I want to show you guys a session where I'm going to show you how you can use Patchworks. So we're going to open up a different session real quick. And this is actually a uh, this is actually a uh, demo track that was uh, a cover song that was recorded a long time ago. So let's just open up Pro Tools, and this might take a little bit of time because I haven't opened up Pro Tools in a couple of days on this computer, at least. Oh, anyway, um, while waiting for Tools to open, we'll, I want to talk about something else. A lot of people don't know that Patchworks also comes with a standalone app. So you can actually be using, um, let me take my headphones off for a second. <laughs> a lot of people do not know that Patchwork has standalone uh, a go, or if you need to do any quick little like guitar doodling and stuff like that, and you want to use an amp sim, you can easily open it up. Studio One. Cool. And Pro Tools is taking its sweet time to open up. And so we'll get Patchworks opened up. But you can basically, um, whenever you want to, like, let's say you're just doing a rough vocal or you have a really nice DI uh, amp sim or bass sim, you can easily open up Patchworks um, as the standalone app and use it and actually play like real time. And you can even set up your effects chains and save those. And that actually saves and opens up in Pro Tools, in Logic, in uh, Cubase, in whatever DAW. Um, I do not think that it works in Reaper because we do not have uh, bracket STs or right now. We tell it what you plug in and stuff like that. So if we turn on our pre, I don't actually have a microphone connected here. So. If I turn on phantom power, you should see right there that I'm getting signal. I'm turning phantom power on and off real quick. Um, and basically, all you do is then you just do whatever performance and you load a VST or an audio unit. And you could easily um, select one. If you get a nice vocal chain or nice setup that you feel is you're really comfortable with, you can uh, save that. And then you can open that up in Pro Tools, Studio One, Logic, whatever you want to. And if we let my VST folder load, I have like 500 plugins, literally. 
Oh, just to save some CPU. Yeah, we'll save this. Patchworks again. There's Postal's opening up. Okay, we'll go back to Patrick's. So we have a bunch of stuff right here. Let's just grab uh, Let's grab the MB7 mixer. So as soon as that loads up, this might be able to take a little bit of time because I'm opening a plugin and a DAW. Okay, so here we can actually see what's going on. And if I turn on the signal with my phantom power, you can see that it kind of gains it. So as you see, this is a plugin being standalone. It's working, right? So all you'd have to do you just have to save this. Save as. We'll save this as demo one. And then when Pro Tools initializes, we will actually, I'll show you guys how that works. Um, a cool thing about Patchworks is you have up to eight rows and eight columns. You can actually expand or, or make it Bigger. And you have these cool things like these cool parallel chains, which basically means that whatever it does is a signal flow goes from um, the pre section all the way down in line or in serial. And here on the output, on the post, again, this is after all the processing, and then it goes in line and then to your output. So if this is, you can turn on a parallel chain, and all you do is you turn them on. What it does is it makes a parallel copy basically goes from here into the parallel chains and then it sums you have two different uh, summing algorithms you have average which basically reduces the volume by 3 dB for every uh, parallel chain that you make so it kind of like evens itself out and you have sum sum is the one I like to use the most because it make, mainly makes it so you can actually do parallel processing in one go because it keeps everything the same volume you can control your output and input and even your uh, phase or your polarity. And this way you can do a whole parallel chain. So this is opened up. And remember how we save this as demo one. So I'm going to show you guys how that's going to work right now as soon as this opens up. So here we have a old, old cover song. I think this is recorded and I'm still going to school. So this is years old. Open up. And go for go for patchworks, and let's close anymore. And this also works for VSTs too. So if you uh, for VSTIs, so if you're using virtual instruments, you can create your own little synth patch, and that live or at a gig or just for fun, and you really like it, you can throw it into Pro Tools any DAW you want, and just load up the preset and it'll everything will open up just it. So here open. Open here we see demo one. So now we open up demo one. And we can see there's the plugin that we did and there's the any parameters which we didn't really change anything. But here's another feature that a lot of people don't know about patch things to parameters. We have the blue cat um, MB7 mixer, which is basically a multi band mixer which incorporates plugins like Patchworks does. Say, I want to have the gain on channel one, and I want to automate that. Parameter map, and we've got gain on, and now we have a parameter. As you can see, it is if we're going to open up the settings and we have control one so we add that click OK open it up I'll we'll move this make this really small keep these both really small go to Pro Tools no. 
we can just open this up. And now you see Patchworks Control. So now all you gotta do is let's grab the pencil tool and let's just draw this. If you watch, I'll actually move around with you. So this people don't actually know is available. Works. So with this, you're actually to kind of control the parameters that you actually put in here, which is very, very useful and very, very powerful. Um, you can easily just delete this automation, huh? And we'll take this automation control away. Now, I was saying earlier how I like to use Patchworks as a way to do parallel processing. And I'm going to show you guys how I do that right now. So we're going to just solo this. Now, this is a cover of uh, the song Isis by Bob Dylan. And like I said, this was done a long time ago. Let's do our output to get our main out. I'm here. Cool. You getting the output still? So? Yeah. Cool. I'm here, did I say? Should be getting it. Alright, cool. Cool. So, what we're going to do, let's open up Patchworks. And let's just take a look. Cool. I'm here, did I say? It's on the fifth day of May. But I could not. Noticing is very dynamic, and I might want to do a little bit of parallel compression and processing to it. So I'm going to solo out this first one and have it set to sum. I'm going to actually have one. The last one's going to be clean. We're going to have volume all the way down for now. So we're I'm married, I said, on the fifth day. Um, could not. Cool. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to load in a VF. Let's see if we can do any kind of like really aggressive uh, processing to this. And again, because I have so many plugins, this thing takes forever to load up. So I would actually suggest that if you uh, use a SSD hard drive or something fast um, on my Mac laptop, since I don't actually use my laptop to do much I find that I get a little bit slow controls. So let's see. So let's grab the Blue Cat Dynamics 4. Okay. We're going to do those. We're going to do some parallel processing. So we're going to actually just really heavily, <clears throat> really heavily. I'm very on the fifth day of May, but I could not on so I cut my hair and I straight away found a long country where I could not go wrong. I met I said on the fifth day of May, but I could not hold on. So we're basically completely choked the dynamics out. Original, it's way different. Where did I say that they are me? But I could not hold on. But, but that can be a little, little bit in an actual mix. So we're, we're going to blend them. So we're going to have this. I'm going to set this to about, start this off at negative six. Your headroom. I'm I say on the fifth. Me, but I'd hold on a very long. I cut off my head and I rode straight away for the wild unknown country where I could not run. So, as you can see, what we're using the uh, plugins, uh, one of the parallel chains without the plugin activated to actually original unprocessed vocal compressing it really, really, really and this way I can 
actually do um, some really nice processing to, to it while it's natural and keeping it dynamic at the same, you know, natural and dynamic and keeping it really, really compressed so it stays in. So we want to add a re reverb to this for some reason. We'll go find a, uh, a reverb plugin. I have so many reverb plugins, but I want one specific one. You know what? Let's just go for you know what? we'll just go for whatever first reverb I can find. Yeah, we'll go for the RC forty eight. So now we're doing a parallel chain with just the reverb. Let's just listen to that. We'll set this to uh to what? So now what we're going to do is we're going to actually process this with a little bit of EQ because that sounds a little bit, a little bit too, uh, like kind of metallic. And let's set this to minimum phase. Seems a little bit more tame for me. So now we have a reverb send going on, and we can actually blend this in. And then let's say what we want: the final bit of um, dynamic control to this, just to kind of add a little bit of a, a like glue or gel. And we can do is for the output. We can very easily just kind of put another. And for this, we're going to go for more. I just know for a fact I want to go for opto. Really, R and I'm going to go for a faster RMS, probably like 160. Have the release set to maybe 50 on the. I'm married, I said, could not hold on. So I cut off my hair and I rose straight for the wild unknown country where I couldn't go wrong. A little bit of control, like 2 dB. I married, I said, on the day of May, but I'd hold on for very long. So I cut off my hair and I rose straight. So then in the actual mix, you can actually hear what's going on. I'm married, I said, on the fifth day of May. Not home very long. So I cut off my hair, and I rose straight away. For the wild country where I could go wrong. So, a lot of these you can do in Pro Tools itself. Um, you can set up aux sends, you could do and stuff like this, but one big thing I like is it keeps things in phase by using latency compensation. So the EQ that I actually this equalize EQ actually has modes where you can uh, give it uh, latency and stuff like that. <clears throat> so if I go to mixed phase, you can see right here on my actual screen my delay change. If I go to linear phase, it changes it again. It's in phase and in time. So this way, um, I don't have to worry about um, these issues unless the plug is causing the issues by either causes phase issues in general. Like if you're doing parallel, and then you have a deesser where you're going to get a little so you just probably should put the deesser and have one just not doing anything. Or the plugin itself tells the uh, it's the wrong, uh, the wrong. Um, there are a few plugins, but nowadays most plugins do 
issue. But as you can hear, really quickly, you can get a decent sound. I didn't even use any real um, EQ. I just used compression and then ways of it to kind of make it sound stand out. That is a really quick, if you ever want to program, you can see and hide by clicking the three dots. And then you can actually just select it because that was the first control. It has up to 40 controls, so you can control up to 40 parameters for a different bunch of different plugins. You have that set up, and then we'll go into Pro Tools. We'll just have parameter one, control one, and that way we can control the output gain all we want, which is fun, but I don't think we want to really mess with this too hardcore. So just do this very quickly. Slow this out. Open up Patchworks. And again, you'll be able to see it here. So yeah, um, that's about it for today. Um, I really just wanted to on the automation for Patchworks and how you could use it as a parallel and uh, the Blue Cat Dynamics and how it has a lot of controls. You can get a lot of different sounds. You can get a darker, you can make the tone darker, you can make it a little bit brighter, you can make it pump really, really um, plugins. They're very very uh, I don't know I'll I'll give you, I'll give you guys the link of my email and they can uh, I guess you can put it in the description they can email me if they will have any specific questions about any of the products that I was showing today and uh, yeah I think that's about it Show the Westlake Pro thing a little bit. Sure.